I am going into my second year of university, so I thought it would be a good idea to make a video all about first year. I think this could be a little bit of a long video, so grab yourself a tea, a coffee, get comfy, and let's have a chat. Okay, let's start off with everything about me, like where I'm going, blah, blah, blah. I currently go to Manchester Metropolitan University, MMU. Specifically, I go to Manchester School of Art, which is like within that. And I am doing illustration with animation. This is actually my second time going to uni. The first time, so it's 2018. I went to the University of Sussex for economics and I hated it. I loved my friends. I loved where I was living, but the course was just so boring. And I realized it wasn't what I wanted for my life. I wanted to have fun and be creative. Not even after the first term, it was literally like six weeks into my course, I dropped out. Since then, up until obviously last year, I wasn't at school. I was just living life, thinking I was never gonna go back to uni. The first year after I dropped out was maybe the worst year of my life. <laughs> Um, I was really depressed. For my job, I was like babysitting. I was making YouTube videos. I was working in a cafe also, but I didn't really have any direction. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And that got me really down because obviously I saw all of my friends going off to uni, doing their thing. And they all looked like they had it figured out and they had a plan and I didn't. Really, really bad year. And during that year, I was kind of thinking, I wanna go back back to uni and do a creative subject. However, then it was 2020 and COVID happened. That kind of scuppered my plans. I wasn't really sure about it in the first place, but this just confirmed that I shouldn't go just yet because there's no point in going to do an arts degree if you can't even use the facilities. So yeah, I stayed at home through lockdown and then it got to 2021 and I was really bored and I still wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, so I moved to Ireland. I moved to Belfast with my friend and I had so much fun. It's also the place that I decided, yes, I'm going back to university. So on that note, just know that you do not have to go to university straight out of school. You could go back when you're like 40 if you really wanted to. I know that there was a guy, a guy, there was a grown man, 80 something or other on fine art last year. So you could be 80 going to uni. Don't feel pressured to jump into a course that you really don't wanna do just because that's what everyone else is doing. Everyone has their own paths and that is so okay. I'm so glad I waited like five years after school. I've never been happier. I love my course so much and it will actually help me to do what I want to do after uni. I actually asked everyone on my Instagram to send me questions about first year university. And I actually got a question on that topic. This person said, was it weird since you aren't 18? I'm considering going back, but I'm 22. So I started university at the age of 23 and within the first week of being at uni, I turned 24. So that made me like six years older than a lot of the people. The person that I was when I was 18 is so different to the person I am now. <laughs> Thank God, to be honest. I completely understand why people would be so apprehensive about being around people not their age. And I definitely was. You're not alone. There's a guy on my course who is two years older than me. Also in art courses, a lot of people tend to do a foundation, which means they are 19 or 20 when they start uni. So yeah, that's still younger, but not as much. Also, you don't have to hang out with the 18 year olds. They're all perfectly nice, but we're at different stages in life. I also don't think I'm crazy mature. I'm mature when I have to be, but I do think I come across quite young. Like when I told people that I was 24, almost 25, all of them were like, what the fuck? Like, you're so old. Which, first of all, how dare you? But second, yeah, I am quite old. If you are a bit older going to university, I definitely suggest getting a job so you can meet people more around your age. There is like a mature students 
society at my uni anyway also check facebook groups there are always people from so many different backgrounds so many different ages so don't be apprehensive if you feel like you're on your own i mean to be honest i actually think you should be going to university in your early 20s and not when you're a teenager when you come straight out of school straight out of living at home all you want to do is party and kind of just take a break a levels are fucking hard and that's why i needed five years to decompress before being like yeah i'm ready for education again being older at uni made me work harder you kind of recognize how much money you're spending on it it also meant that like i'm not going out as much as most people do you know as a fresher i know my boundaries and i'm not afraid to say no to people whereas when i was a teenager i didn't know myself as well and i would just say yes to things that i didn't want to do because i wanted to fit in whereas now i don't give a shit if people don't like me <laughs> and i think that's just something that you build with age to this person yes absolutely go to uni when you're 22. another great Great question why did you choose your major and how did you make sure it's the right one for you i think major is an american word what do we even call it i just say course here what was your degree in america i think you kind of have to do general studies and then you pick one of those things to then major in but in the uk you start off straight away doing one course right off the bat I started with illustration and animation. I don't have to do any other subjects. I guess that's pretty daunting. It's such a big decision to make. You're spending a lot of money. It is a three year course. You choose what you wanna do at university in your first year of sixth form or college. The fact that you have to choose what you wanna do when you're 17. Again, the person I was when I was 17 is wildly different to who I am now. At A-level, I did maths, further maths, physics, and economics. And here I am doing an art degree. During my gap year, I went traveling. That really opened my eyes to how my life could be. And I met a lot of people who just have a way of life that I didn't know was possible. I think what I realized was I wanted to live my life for me rather than my parents or what my friends might think or just like society in general you really have to know yourself before you pick your course which is hard to do when you're still a teenager i was picking between graphic design illustration or fine art like along those kind of lines fine art i would say is it's more general i guess graphic design is very industry based with illustration it feels like a mix of the two like you're still being super creative but then you are learning how to use your skill in a business sense i think the best thing to do is think about what you want to do after uni i would go on to job listings and anything that i kind of liked the sound of i would look at their requirements and some of them say that you need a degree in a certain subject or just like an arts based subject or something like that if you don't know what job you want to do just try and think about a passion that you have in your life relate it to a course somehow like if you love working out and fitness maybe think about doing nutrition or physio or if you love true crime maybe go for criminology or something definitely focus on what you like and know what other people like because then you're more likely to actually complete your course unlike my first one and also try not to be afraid of dropping out of a course that you hate it's better to drop out sooner rather than spend three years hating your life and then come out with a degree that you don't even want focus on you that's what i say now let's move on to accommodation what was it like living with the people that you didn't know what's the best accommodation at mmu i stayed in burley accommodation at mmu and specifically i was in Naylor. let's say that this is mmu burley's over here literally it was like a 10 minute walk i think there's like oxford court archway and then burley's over here and the reason i went to burley was because i like probably a lot of you was looking up videos on youtube from people who go to mmu trying to figure out where was the best place to go this one girl said if you want to make friends then go to burley and like she showed around her accommodation and it looked really nice and i was like yeah you know what that sounds good i'd only have to share a bathroom with one other person and it actually wasn't one of the most expensive accommodations so i was like that sounds fine now let me tell you 
if I could go back and not apply to Burley, I absolutely would. Maybe that's because I'm 24 and not a teenager anymore, but living with 11 teenagers was not fun for me. If you follow me on Instagram, then you've probably seen stories about the kitchen, the bin situation, being kept up at night situation. It wasn't fun. Literally the first night that I moved in, I was woken up at 3 a.m. by the boy opposite me blasting DMB, and I genuinely contacted the student union being like, get me out of here. And they said that they could. By the time they found somewhere for me, I was like, I'm settled. I'm just gonna stay where I am big mistake. Burley accommodation is definitely for the people who love to party, are very social and don't care so much about cleanliness. Obviously I can only speak for myself and my flat. Maybe there were some other flats that were nice but from what I've heard from friends who also lived in a Burley accommodation they also told me like horror stories like one girl was sharing a bathroom with a boy and I think he like just pissed on the floor and didn't clean it up people shaving and not cleaning it up people being sick and used my towel to wipe it up honestly horrendous also i didn't really get on with my flatmates they were all like nice enough the girls lovely the boys i i don't even know what to say about the boys to be honest clear that a lot of people never had to do any housework at home or maybe they did and they just didn't care i actually got to the stage where i wasn't buying like proper food because i didn't want to spend time in my kitchen so i ended up just buying like meal deals constantly or eating at work because i didn't want to be anywhere but my room and that was actually really unhealthy for me mentally and physically i think it contributed to my eczema flare up i wasn't giving my body nutrition because i didn't want to be in the social areas it would be really useful if universities did a questionnaire and paired people together based on their interests but they don't do anything like that one girl actually dropped out from my flat and i think majorly because she didn't like anyone and then someone else moved into my flat and she literally stayed for a month and moved out again because she hated it. That's how bad it was. If you're going to MMU, I would recommend go to one of the accommodations where you only have to share a kitchen, a flat, a floor or whatever with like four people. 12 people in a flat is too much unless you're so into partying, which is so fine. Like you're 18, you've just left home. Of course you wanna have fun. But if you're in your twenties like me, it's not the vibe or if you're introverted it's just a bit overwhelming if you don't make friends with your flatmates that is so fine you'll make friends somewhere else i think you do have to accept that it's not going to be super clean like ever because you're all teenagers no one wants to take out the bins let's be honest so definitely go into it with the mindset of being okay with a bit of filth but obviously there is a point where it's not okay and if it gets to that then you can email the student living department. You're paying the same amount of money that they are to be there and you deserve to have a nicer experience than what they're giving you. I would say if you're my age, I kind of wish I'd found a flat through an agent or maybe on spare room rather than live with teenagers. But because I was in Belfast before moving over, I obviously couldn't go and do flat viewings. So this was just like a safer option for me. But if you can go and see a flat or something, I definitely wouldn't go to the uni accommodation. I have had maybe the most questions about making friends and how easy is it? Where do you find friends? Were you lonely? So obviously, I didn't make any friends where I lived, but where I made friends mostly is on my course. It's much easier to make friends on an art course because you do workshops together. You're usually just sitting at tables making art together. And so you end up chatting. Whereas if you're doing maths, for example, you're in lectures all the time and you're not really supposed to chat to people in lectures. But if you are struggling, then I would suggest signing up for a society, whether that's 
a sports society, there's like anime societies, there was a crafting society at mine, there's the mature student society. I can't say that it is a good place because I didn't join any societies. I did do lacrosse for like two weeks and I met some really lovely girls there. I just realized I didn't want to do lacrosse. But if I had stayed at lacrosse, I'm sure that a lot of those girls would have ended up being my main friend group. I would also recommend getting a part-time job. Even if you have got a maintenance loan or your parents are supporting you, I think getting a job is so good to fill your time because you do actually have a lot of time in first year and also you can meet people and that is where I've met my best friends. I'm also super lucky because one of my best friends here actually messaged me saying, hi, I watch your YouTube videos <laughs> or like she used to or whatever. And that's how we became friends. You can also make friends online. I would suggest maybe before you even go to university, you could join some Facebook groups, maybe like message someone that you think kind of looks like would be your type of person. That's not what I did in my experience. I just turned up not knowing anyone and it was fine. I think my biggest advice for making friends is to just be as open as possible. You can go to the societies, the sports teams, your course, and if you aren't prepared to kind of be open and make conversation, then you're not gonna make friends. I know it's scary to talk to people that you don't know, but you have to remember that everyone's in the same boat. How would you feel if you were in a lecture and the person next to you was like, Hi, what's your name? I'd be so happy. I'd be like, thank God someone's actually talked to me. <laughs> also on the friend note, it's very easy to find someone in the first week of uni and kind of latch on to them. Six weeks later, you realize that you don't actually like this person. You only were friends with them because you didn't want to be alone. I've heard a lot of stories like that. Don't be afraid to branch out and have friends in lots of different places. Someone also asked if I ever felt lonely or if I was homesick. No, personally, that hasn't really happened to me. It definitely makes a difference that I'm 24 and I spent the last like year and a half not living at home anyway. I am close with my parents, but not to the extent where like I'd be really upset to move country, you know? I moved to Belfast, I was really far away from them. I'm used to being far away from them. Obviously I do really miss them sometimes as well as my sisters, but I am mostly okay just being on my own. If you are feeling homesick, it is so okay to go home for like a weekend um, or for reading week or whatever. Try not to go home every weekend. That will just make it worse because you don't make friends that way. But a good way to kind of combat homesickness and loneliness is to just keep yourself busy. Do activities on your own. Go to a cafe, read a book. I love being alone. Like literally get away from me. <laughs> um, no, I love my friends. Just keep in mind that if you don't have any friends at the moment, that doesn't mean you're not gonna meet friends in the future. Let's move on to going out culture and dating life, blah, 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 all of that, the fun stuff. Obviously, university as a whole <laughs> should be about the education and the degree, but let's be honest, it's also a lot about getting drunk and doing drugs and going out, for most people anyway. Obviously, there's a lot of people who don't enjoy that type of things. I've also got a lot of questions from you guys being like, I don't like going out what do I do? Like, should I go to uni? Obviously university, especially first year, is mostly about going out and having fun for a lot of people. Like you've worked so hard in A-levels and GCSEs, you're allowed to let off some steam, okay? I'm gonna be honest, Freshers Week is probably not gonna be as crazy and wild as you think it's gonna be. In my first Freshers Week, I think I went to maybe like two events and then in my second Freshers Week, again, I think I went to one night out. It was okay, but let's just think I was a 24 year old in a club with loads of 18 year olds. It's kind of embarrassing really, <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend it, but it was still fun. It was a nice way to get to know my flatmates. Like we had pre's in the flats and then went out. I went to a place called Cargo and also a place called Factory, which are maybe the two shittest clubs I've ever been to. The way that I would describe both of those places is cover your drinks. I actually don't know anyone who's been spiked in there, but that's like the vibe it gives. Sticky walls, just really shit music. You're gonna get sick, 
you are gonna get so sick because you're not feeding yourself properly. Let's be honest, you're probably gonna be eating like ready meals all the time or just pasta. And then you're gonna be going out and then you've got to go to lectures. Don't overwhelm yourself. And it's okay to say no. Some people might be like, oh, you're so boring that like you don't go out. Who fucking cares? Like, what, what does it matter if I'm not there? I'm not gonna go out if I don't want to. Obviously, everyone drinks a lot of alcohol, like to the point of blacking out, throwing up everywhere. It's messy. So if you're not a drinker, I think there's probably societies like like a sober society. It's still fine to go out with your friends if they're doing all of that stuff as long as you're okay being in that environment. On the drugs front, I actually haven't done drugs at university before. I think a lot of students tend to do a lot of ket. Also, the kids are doing something called like Cool Whip. No, <laughs> no Cool Whip's that like square cream. Smart Whip is what I'm <laughs> trying to say. I'm so old. I don't know anything about that. I feel like that's probably like really dangerous. Lots of drug dealers have actually, I say lots, two drug dealers have actually like approached me and given me like a lighter with their phone number on it. Literally they'll go around Freshers Week and hand out their card to people. It is easy to get drugs. I'm not gonna say don't do drugs because I'd be very hypocritical. I would just say be careful, be with people that you know and trust. I've always been with my friends and at least one of them would not be doing drugs. So at least there's kind of one responsible person around. Just be wary of it. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. You can say no. So don't be worried about like people thinking you're lame or whatever. So that's like going out, drugs, partying, dating life. My dating life has been like, okay. I feel like a lot of people expect to just get into a relationship straight away or the opposite, be having like loads of sex. I can't say that was the case for me. I'm still single, but I would say the dating is easier, so much easier than being at school. When you're at school, you know those people maybe since you were like three years old sometimes. Whereas when I came here to Manchester, obviously being in a big city helps. It's not just the uni students there, but you can also meet people who are just like living and working in Manchester. I'm on Hinge and Tinder. That's like the only way that I go on dates with people. I'm quite confident in the fact that I will ask people on dates and I enjoy going on dates. Even if it's like a really shit date, like I'm like, oh, it's for the plot, you know? It's a story to tell. I would definitely recommend that you don't get into a relationship or a situationship with someone that you live with. That's probably a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I would recommend Hinge if you actually want to find someone to have a relationship with. Hinge is probably better than Tinder. Tinder is more just like hookups. One of my friends from home met her boyfriend on Tinder, so it can be done. Personally, it hasn't worked though. Also, if you are queer, which I am, I would say go to a big city university because I think the LGBT scene is better here. Pride was so fun. Also being at an art school and being gay is like amazing because everyone is <laughs> pretty much. Don't feel pressure to be dating anyone or to sleep with people that you don't want to sleep with just because other people are doing it. Like for example, in my uni accommodation, there was a chart with like how many people you have sex with or how many times that you throw up from alcohol, which you know what, it's kind of funny, it's kind of fun. I would definitely recommend focusing more on friends. That's, that's my tips. <laughs> Let's move on to money, budgeting. So obviously you can get a loan. I've got a loan that covers my full tuition cost. The maximum you can get, 9,000, whatever. Yeah, I know so much money but that covers my tuition and then you can also get a maintenance loan that can help you with your rent food going out that loan depends on your family's income i don't really know why because even if you've got loads of money that doesn't mean that your parents are gonna support you if your parents do earn a lot of money you're gonna be given a smaller loan because they expect your parents to help you if you get a small loan and you don't have parents to support you you're definitely gonna have to get a job personally in first year i saved up about i think four and a half grand 
um, whilst I was in Belfast to pay for my rent. And I also got a small maintenance loan to cover the rest of the rent because my rent for that year was like over six grand, which is crazy for the experience that I had, like the most shit experience. <laughs> and I paid six grand for it. I didn't get a maintenance loan that covered my food or going out for that. I got a part-time job. I'm on a 15 hour contract, so that sustained me. I will earn, I think at least like 600 quid a month. And then I also have my YouTube where I'll get at least, at least an extra hundred. Sometimes it's like 300 extra pounds. And that's like way more than enough to survive on. I know people who have literally worked one day a week. So I've literally got like 200 pounds for the whole month to live on and they've done it. But I think because I'm 24 and I've also spent so many years away from home working and living already, I've built myself a standard of living that I'm used to, going out for nice dinners with my friends, going to bars, buying clothes. That's why I have a job. Besides rent, I'd say you're probably gonna be spending like at least a hundred pounds a week if you're going out a lot, that is. Alcohol costs a lot of money, food costs money, buying supplies for uni. I have to buy a lot of art supplies, so it's even more money. Before you go to uni, I would definitely try and save up a little bit of money just so that you feel more secure, more safe. You don't have to save four and a half grand like I did. Also, before you come, I would recommend working out your budget. I also really recommend getting an app like Monzo or Revolut, I'm pretty sure it's the other one. I have a Monzo and it's really useful for budgeting because every payment that you make is sorted into a category. So at the end of the month, you can see how much you're spending and on what. You can also sort your money into pots. I have like my monthly budget. Then I've also got my bills. And then I've also got like my lifetime savings type thing. So every time I get paid from work, I'll sort my money into those pots. And then that means I can only spend what's in that monthly budget pot. A little budgeting app like that is really useful. I think for a maintenance loan, you can get like three grand, maybe more than that. I'm not actually sure. I think there's also bursaries and scholarships that you can apply for. Don't hesitate to contact the university and be like, what can I do? And the way that you do the whole loan thing is go on to studentfinance.gov, I think, and you can set up your account there. Only do this after you've actually accepted an offer because you need to know which university you're going to because then the government will send the money to the university that you're going to and you don't have to worry about any of that. For me, it was very easy to get a job. Literally the day that I moved, I went around town with my CV and handed it into places. I also emailed a lot of places and I think I got like three emails back and I did one trial shift at this place called Gooey and they offered me the job, but then I didn't reply in time, oops. And so they gave it to someone else, but then that led me to my current job. If you do need a job, make it the first priority because if you don't have money then you can't go out and have fun and i definitely recommend going into cafes or little shops or whatever and showing your face because then they're more likely to look at your application if you wait too long all of the jobs will be taken up because there are thousands of students in the city and most of them will probably get a job you might have to get a job that you don't really like just to pay the bills and that's okay you know if it's like a couple days a week it's not the end of the world as for like manchester as a city is it affordable it's definitely not as cheap as it used to be a pint is five pounds which isn't as much as london of course but yeah at my work it's five pound pint going out for meals is definitely expensive here you're gonna pay at least like 20 30 quid. Like if I'm getting a nice cocktail in a bar, I'd say it's like 10 or 12 pounds. TikTok is really good for finding places that have deals on. Rent right now for me is 410 pounds and then plus my bills, which is another 110 pounds, 520 for a month. And I'm living in a house with four other girls, kind of close to the center, but still in like the student area. I live in Fallowfield, but you can get rent much cheaper, I think. Maybe like 
in the 300s if you go a bit further out of the city. My biggest advice is to just get a job. Whether you need one or not, just get a job. It's fun, it's good experience to put on your CV and you just get extra money. I've also got a lot of questions about how to balance work and having fun. Obviously I do YouTube, I have my job, and I do my course. So that's quite a lot of things to balance. I think if I was just doing uni, I would be bored. I think you have a lot of free time. I think that's how a lot of people get kind of really sad at uni is when they feel like they don't really have a routine because uni is, you know, it's not every day like school and it does change sometimes week to week. So you do feel a bit all over the place. So if you do have a job it's nice because it sets a routine for you i won't lie i haven't been great at balancing things the first term i did leave everything pretty last minute but if you talk to your tutors about it they can be pretty forgiving and they want to help you so they can make it a bit easier for you or give you an extension. I want to be better at it this year for sure. I like being busy, I like doing lots of things. If I'm not doing anything I feel kind of unproductive and like bad about myself which is so toxic but um, that's just how I am. It can be difficult which is why you also haven't seen like loads of videos from me this past year because like I genuinely didn't have time to do this and obviously I have to prioritise work and university this is a hobby for me right now maybe you don't go out because you have an essay due the next day i do have a lot of planners let me show you them they're really pretty this isn't sponsored but i was gifted these things papier papier it's the french word papier they gifted me some planners this is the academic year planner first of all how gorgeous is that? You can put in your schedule, your deadlines. It's got a monthly overview. It's got a weekly overview. I'll link all of this in the description box because why not? And then I've also got this one that they sent me. It's a weekly planner and it's just set out like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's like a to-do list. And then they also sent me a pack of these which is like a little list pad. And again, it's just like a list of things and then you can check them off. This is how I stay organized. If you don't really know how to do bullet journaling and you can't set up your own stuff, this is great because it does it for you. Even when I'm not in education, I use a planner. But if you are struggling, don't be scared to approach your teachers. My university at least is very, very good with mental health. You can get a therapist or counselor through the university if you're really struggling. They also recognize any like learning disabilities. The university will definitely help you. First year doesn't count in most cases. You just have to pass and a pass is like 40%. But if you don't pass, you just retake like a module or something over summer and then you can get enough credits to pass. It's not the end of the world if you have to retake. But yeah, compared to A-levels, I would say first year of university is like so much easier. Don't get me wrong, especially for art students, there's a lot to do. You're always, always gonna be doing something. That is how I manage everything. The last like kind of question that I've got is specific to Manchester about like my Manchester recommendations. I don't go out that much, but when I do go out, I go usually to the Northern Quarter. It's kind of like the trendy place. It's very expensive, mind you. I like Night and Day, Lost Cat, Behind Closed Doors is like, it's interesting. Interesting. It's a bar, but it's like a themed bar. Obviously, Feel Good Club, where I work, I love going out there and having cocktails. Also, I would love it, absolutely love it, if you came into my work and said hi. I've had like five or so of you do that already, and yeah, it's just really nice to meet all of you and put a face to like the number. So, come and say hi please what else i like yes bar that's really fun they've got like a rooftop bar terrace also has a rooftop bar that's in northern quarter pier hat is really fun like behind stevenson square stevenson square is great for like if it's a really sunny day you can just sit outside and have pints flock next to that which is 
amazing. Lost in Tokyo is fun. Also, if you do work in hospitality, there's a place called Sherlock's, which only lets you in if you work in hospitality. You just have to show your payslip. I really like Peveril of the Peak. It's really chill in there. It's tiny, but they do have like an outside part. Also Big Hands on Oxford Road. And then over near Terrace, there's some good like eating places around there. I like Nell's Pizza because it's pretty cheap. I love Ramona, which is a pizza place. It's so expensive, but I'm hoping that my friend gets a job there because then I'll get her discount. Firehouse is connected to Ramona and that's like a bougie place, but they do really good roast dinners. Verga is good. That's like a vegan burger place. Salt and Pepper is like a chicken place. Chinatown is very good for eats. Rudy's is really reliable. I feel like I'm just recommending pizza places because I just like pizza. Ooh, there's a new place called Onda, which is a pasta bar. There's a really cool place called Mackie Maya, which is like a food court, but like a really bougie one. Band Off The Wall is really good for gigs. Funkademia is fun. And also Death Institute. There's also White Hotel, which I think is more like ravey and druggy, if that's your thing. <laughs> I do want to go to one night there, but I just haven't been yet. I recommend going to Rockover Climbing Centre. Bouldering, so fun. Also very sociable. We have um, an LGBT climbing club there. If you're in Fallowfield, there's a place called House. That's a really cute little cafe, but it turns into like a little bar at night. They have jazz nights and comedy nights. I'm not sure about anywhere else in Fallowfield yet because I haven't really explored it much. Secondhand shopping, I'd say go to Blue Rinse. There's also a kilo thrift sale um, that's attached to Blue Rinse. Cow, cow's more expensive. You know, I found some good stuff in there. Affleck's. And then shopping in like the Arndale. I definitely have missed out a lot of things. I always post things on my stories, on my TikTok, on my Instagram. If you want to know other places that I like in Manchester. I think I've covered everything. I mean, I bloody hope I have. It's been over three hours of me talking to you. <laughs> but if I have and you've still got unanswered questions, then please just comment and I'll try and answer them. But yeah, I hope this video has helped you with your uni questions and you're feeling a little bit more confident. I'm going to try and do more weekly vlogs this year because I regret not doing it last year. I want to remember my time, you know, and I also want to share it with you guys. If you are going to university this year, then good luck. I'm sure you're going to have a really great time. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.